deworming programs have no negative effects on gut health. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the no worm, no foul edition. I'm Julie Wolf, science communication specialist here at ASM, and today we'll be discussing an article from ASM's MBio journal that shows that deworming programs cause no harm to the patient gut microbiome. This is a big deal because helminth infections or worm infections affect millions of people worldwide, uh, and there are a number of deworming campaigns ongoing. Helminths can influence the immune response in a number of ways, and that influence on the immune response can uh, also have an influence on the bacteria that are part of the gut microbiome. Removing the worms, uh, as happens in deworming campaigns, may then influence what gut bacteria can take over that niche or grow as the immune system changes. Additionally, the medicines that are used uh, and the compounds that are given as treatments can have a potential effect on the gut microbiome composition. This has a potentially big uh, impact on public health as many countries, including India, have national deworming programs. Uh, For example, India has um, a day set aside in February in which uh, all school-aged and preschool-aged children are giving deworming treatments. Uh, How will these public deworming campaigns influence gut health is the question being asked here. In this study, the researchers looked at stool samples uh, of residents from five different Kenyan villages that were undergoing deworming treatment. They analyzed these stool samples both before and at intermediate times after the treatment was given to them. In the next slide, we'll look at some of their results. In the top panel, we are looking at patients who were later found to have particular helminth infections. In panel A, we're looking at um, patients who have roundworm infection. In panel B, people who have hookworm, the Necator americanus uh, infection. In C, any soil transmitted helminth, so combining these different um, uh, individuals. And in D, uh, they are looking at those that ended up not being diagnosed as having any helminth infections, but were given the deworming treatment, acting as a control um, for those that did have the worms. What we're looking at are the the diversity as measured with the Shannon index, um, where a higher number uh, or higher on the y-axis indicates a more diverse uh, gut microbiome or more different types of microbes that are present, uh, in particular looking at bacteria here. And they are tracing one individual, so each line is tracing uh, an individual both before treatment and then three months after treatment. And while we see some individual changes in gut bacterial diversity, at a population level, there was no significant changes in any of these populations uh, when they were given that deworming treatment. However, although the diversity didn't change, the composition was shown to be uh, affected by the deworming treatment, and that's shown in the bottom panel on the left-hand side with the bar graphs. These are, um, in in this case, each bar represents a single individual and the uh, types of bacteria that are making up the gut microbiome, both pre-treatment on the left-hand side and post-treatment, three months post-treatment on the right-hand side. Uh, And you can see that there is a slightly different composition Um, that uh, is found in the post-treatment. In particular, the outgrowth of the pink um, bar there, which represents the uh, Clostridiaceae, uh, which includes the potential opportunistic human pathogen, C. difficile. However, the scientists were um, very specific to look for C. difficile and did not find that it was one of the uh, members that was represented in that pink bar graph. And and it's important to remember that uh, the Clostridia are normal uh, anaerobic members of the um, gut microbiome, uh, and that many of them are not pathogenic. Uh, And so in the next slide, we will see that this was picked up uh, in a number of outlets. This was highlighted in an ASM press release uh, in which the lead scientist, the first author, Alice uh, Easton, was quoted as summarizing, saying that we don't see any evidence suggesting deworming programs should be concerned about negative effects on the gut microbiome of curing hookworm or roundworm. Uh, she goes on to clarify uh, this piece was, or this press release was picked up by a technical outlet, uh, MediBulletin, which highlights medical uh, interest, uh, medical research of interest. Uh, and Easton goes on to say that we see an increase in clostridia following hookworm cure. Uh, 
But it's worth pointing out that the Clostridium difficile, or Clostridiales difficile, as the nomenclature is now, was not something that we saw a change in. Nothing changed that we could clearly associate with the people being worse off. Uh, if you want to learn more about how helminths can influence the immune response and how some of those mechanisms are being used in clinical trials, there is a, an article recently published on ASM.org, Helminths and Health, Finding Purpose in Our Old Friends, and we'll link to that down below. In this Microbial Minute session, we learned that deworming campaigns are safe, and although they can influence the composition of the gut microbiome, there are no negative effects that are predicted from these changes. I'd like to thank you for listening. If you're interested in more Microbial Minute updates, uh, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll give, give you a notification every time there's a new update. I'd like to thank Ray Ortega for production, uh, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.